Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Al-Akram Al-Ladhi Khalaq Al-Insana Wa Karram Wa'allamahu Min Al-Bayani Ma Lam Ya'lam Fasubhana Al-Ladhi La Yuhsa Imtinanuhu La Bil Lisani Wa La Bil Qalam Fa'ashahu Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Wa Ahmaduhu Wa Asta'inuhu Wa Astaghfiruhu Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyina maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Amma ba'd Fakar qala Allahu ta'ala fi muhakam al-tanzil Wal furqan al-majid wa huwa asdaqu al-qailin Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qarib Ujibu da'wata al-da'i idha da'an Fal yastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yashudun وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث روي عن عناس بن مالك رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدعاء مخ العبادة رواه تيميذي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله صدق الله العلي الرذيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهرين والشاكرين والحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers, sisters, elders in Islam, as our right, as our Muslim right and believers, we start each and everything and each and every one of our action in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Our praise is due for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer, the Rabb of the entire universe and secondly we send Darud and salam salutations on our Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household his companions and all believe in men and women who follow them until the end of time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having granted us this favor and this ni'mah and this bounty of believers of iman we call ourselves Muslim under the title of Al-Islam. And we may have heard time and time again about the general meaning of Islam has to do with submission. And as Muslims, we are meant to be submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, I would like to focus regarding to one very minute action which many a times we overlook because it is so tiny compared to other acts of worship but it is actually one of the important aspects of what, one of the most important action and ibadah and acts of worship that we can do in showing our submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the hadith are recited in the khutbah in the Arabic at the beginning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said narrated from Anas bin Malik and recorded by Imam Timothy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that dua, supplication, huwa mukhul ibadah. It is the essence, it is the core of worship. Very small reminder. Three words in the whole reminder. And the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, as he mentioned, uti tu jawami al kalim. I was blessed, I was given with, I was blessed with concise speech. His speech is small in number, small in words, but the meaning is vast. So here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us, this reminds us this beautiful statement, ad-du'a mukhul ibadah, it's the essence of worship. When we talk about the essence and the core of something, what do we refer to? Let's look for example, a nutshell. We we'll take the almond nut for example. The almond nut, the shell, it doesn't have any value. A person will take the shell, you'll break it to get inside to get the almond. And the almond, what is found in the middle of it, that is the core, and that is, that, is every, that is the part that has every value in regards to that whole almond. On the almond tree, they'll pick the shell, they'll pick the fruit, but they only want the nuts from inside. And that is what carries the value. The almond nut eventually carries value than every other thing that comes from the tree. It carries much more value. 
So the core and the essence is something that has a great value. It's something that one cannot do without. And it is something that we will shun aside every other thing or we will make effort using every other thing just to get to that core, just to get to that essence. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminding us of this parable and telling us that dua, it is the essence of ibadah, it is the essence of worship. Today when we talk about worship, we're thinking about our salah, are we thinking about our fasting as Ramadan is around the corner? Are we thinking about our zakah? Our hajj? The arkan of Islam, the pillars of Islam. This is something that first comes to mind whenever we, talk, we think about worship. But the acts of worship, it goes vast and beyond that. Yes, the pillars of Islam, that is the support and that, those are the compulsory acts that we have to do in Islam. But there's always subcategories and the subordinate that supports it. You have to work alongside with all of those small numbers to be able to master and perfect your greater value. That of our salah, that of our acts of fasting, our acts of zakah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam come back and he's, compar com he's comparing the acts of dua and he's saying that this act is the core of ibadah. And the reason Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us this, as I mentioned, that Islam has to do with submissiveness. And in each and every one of our acts of worship, we have to show humility. We have to show submissiveness. Our salahs that we pray in, in our salah, we have to show our humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But with all of the acts of ibadat and acts of worship, there is none which is as brief as dua, and it entails from the beginning to the end that of submission. Because let's ask ourselves, what is dua? What is supplication? We're asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're asking from someone, what are you showing? You're showing your need. You're showing your weakness. You have to humble yourself. You show humility. So the act of dua it entails from the beginning to the end a person's dua has to show humility so this is why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam remind us and he tells us that dua is the essence of worship because each and every act of ibadah we have to do with islam has to do with humility if we don't have humility in our action then we'll be questionable about our action because if we were to stand and pray our salah, but instead of humility, humbling ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all, but this is just an example I'm using, but we stand in there and we, like, and we be like, oh, I'm not in need of the salah, I'm just praying because, you know, the, the masjid cannot be filled without me being in the masjid. Then our act of humility is thrown away. Our ibadah that we do, our salah that we perform, our salat al jumar our salat al zuhr our salat al isha will be questioned. And it goes for any one of our other action. And as for dua, if we were to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're asking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're calling out to Allah, but we're not showing any humility, we're not showing any weakness or humbleness, then how will our dua be accepted? We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are Allah, grant me blessing and barakah in my sustenance. But then at the same time, you're like, I already have barakah in my sustenance. Why am I asking Allah for that? You have no humility in regards to your dua, in your supplication. So an act of dua is to show some humility from the beginning towards the end. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the khaliq, it differs regards to that of the makhluk of the creation. If you were to ask of the creation, after a time, today you ask this Friday, you ask somebody for something, you go to Mola and Faraz and you say, Mola, can I have two dollars? He will give you. Next Friday you come, you ask, he will give you. By the third Friday, you ask, even though he may give you, or even before he give you, he will, he will tell you something. He will be like, you know, brother, why don't you make some effort and why don't you do some work? Why don't you put some effort from your side to involve and have an income? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a contrary, as a khaliq. 
as Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned again hadith from Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu anhu that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man lam yas'alillah yaghdab alayhi that whosoever does not ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes upset at him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry because asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it shows that our remembrance of our iman that we submit submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we turn back and ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't ask of instant insan but first priority we run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes human can human beings they will be the means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can utilize them as a means as this dunya is darul asbab is a abode of means that we have but we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will make that way وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ When we rely our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that He is sufficient for us. He will provide for us. As one famous example I always like to use for that, because coming from back home or from Guyana, those people who know about farming, or you know, people will have the chicken pen, they mind the chicken, and if you have to feed that chicken, or you feed that animal that you have, and you put the feed at one place, it will come easy and take it. But if you scatter it all around the farm and all around the ranch, what happens? The animal has to search for his food. So that is us. When we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the like of us as humankind, as believers. When we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make the means in this dunya. But we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then He will make a way for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets upset when we don't ask of Him. Mankind, on the other hand, they get upset when you ask from them. No matter how much you ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be pleased. That is why when Allah subhanahu when, when a person makes dua, sorry, when a person makes dua, and he is so constant in making dua because of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the angels recognize his voice. Even the angels recognize such a person's voice, so they will hasten to take this person dua up to the heaven. But when it's a person that doesn't submit himself to Allah, he hardly makes dua, he hardly calls on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even at that time when he's going to make dua, his voice will sound strange to the angel. Because it is not a servant that they always hear submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will continue to give us no matter what we ask, no matter how much time we ask. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, reminding us in the Quran, and he told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, addressing him to tell his believers, to tell his servants, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ That when my servants ask you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they're asking you regarding me, regarding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell them, إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am very near. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, how near. They are closer to us than our juggler beings. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِ That I answer the call of the supplicator whenever he calls. I answer his call. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي So let them respond to me. Respond to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to accept our dua. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشِدُونَ And let them believe in me so that they may be righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may respect the gathering. His mercy, his treasures is vast. It is never ending. مَا عِنَّكُمْ بَاقْ وَمَا عِنَّ اللَّهِ مَا عِنَّكُمْ يَنْفَرُ وَمَا عِنَّ اللَّهِ بَاقْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whatever is by you, يَنْفُرُ It will end, it will terminate, it will finish, it will extinguish. But وَمَا عِنَّ اللَّهِ Whatever is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is back, it is everlasting, it is all, all remaining. It will always be there. His treasure does not diminish no matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, no matter what we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He grants us. And we have to be hopeful of our dua always being accepted of Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, narrated by Imam Timothy, sorry, not by Ibn Shayba, Abi Shayba, a hadith came from Abu Mas'ud. He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that a dua of a person is always accepted in one of three ways. Once a person supplicate without bila itham, wala qati'atil rahm, without any sin in that dua, without asking for sin in that dua, or without severing tie of relationship with that dua, 
He's not making a dua for anything wrong, anything haram, or to sever any kinship or any ties. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always grant him his dua in one of three ways. And the first one is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will give him what he asked for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him. You ask for this, he grant it to you. The second one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will save it for him for later. That is in the hereafter. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, you may not see it in this life, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save it for you in the hereafter, as in your reward. And the third one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he avoids the harm that was going to affect you in this dunya. Because of that dua, maybe you did not get the exact thing that you asked for. Maybe that exact thing was not safe for you in the hereafter. But there was some harm and some calamity was going to befall you. And by the means of that dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala avoids it. So as Muslims, we need to always remember that no matter what we supplicate, no matter how sincere we make our dua, if we do not see it in front of us, we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always accept our dua. Once we are sincere and once we follow all of the prerequisites and the requirements of, uh, of our dua. And the very first requirement is that we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the beginning of the time until the end of the dua, until the termination of the dua, we show our weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We show our need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With regards to guideline of making our dua, scholars have written various advices and help us how to perform our adab and etiquettes. And from among them, I will quote some points which was mentioned by Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala and these are some points which was unanimously agreed by various scholars and Imam Ghazali rahimahullah he mentioned that for when a person supplicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to show his humility he starts off his dua praising Allah and darud and salam on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he terminates the dua in the same manner at the beginning you start off you praising Allah you remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you praising him and you send Darud on his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it terminate, you also terminate the same way. The second one is that, just as mentioned in the hadith, we ask of everything only which is halal, which is permissible to ask of. We don't ask for anything which is sinful or which can lead one towards sin. Maybe the thing that we want to ask may not be a direct sin, but it can be a one of the pathways towards leading one towards sin. So we avoid asking for anything which can be for sinful. And the third is that whatever we supplicate as dua, it is an act of ibadah that can do in any language. But for our dua to always be, for hope for our dua to always be readily accepted, the best is that we always try to use dua from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The wordings of the Quran, there are so many dua and adiyah in the Quran and there are so many adiyah from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with that, we have the blessings of those, of the word of Allah and the wordings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we make our dua. But don't get me wrong, dua can be made in any language. There's just some points, scholars mentioned from etiquette, that we try as much as we can to utilize dua from the Quran and Sunnah. And last but not least, there can be many more points, is that when a person makes his dua, before he starts asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of everything, of for anything, he makes tawbah and he repents and he asks for istighfar for everything that he has done wrong before. You show our weakness again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of something, we also, we also show our weakness before we ask of all of my wrong and my wrongdoings that I've done before. And inshallah with these few steps and practicing our etiquettes and Humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It brings us back on towards the core point of our ibadah. Submissive ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, that is what we're supposed to be. Ones who are submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, the command addressing us. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, udkhulu fi silmi kafa. That all those who believe, he wasn't addressing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't addressing the mankind, the humanity at large, but he's addressing the believers. You already took testimony of faith in your iman, you already acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your Rabb, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us who already took our shahada. That, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, all those who believe, udkhulu fi silmi kafa, enter into Islam wholeheartedly, enter submissively wholeheartedly into Islam. 
Submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Submissively, willingly, without a doubt So we show our meekness, we show our weakness And we show our our lame and our ajziyah Our du'fa, our humility and humbleness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That we cannot do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission And we will only get things what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits and one quote, a uh, reminder I would like to close off this khutbah with is that, you know the famous statement we always use we've heard time and time again people mention that dua it moves mountains it moves rocks and this goes not by just a general statement like that but there is a reason behind this statement if we were to look at it into the history Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us of a story of an incident that took place with three people three companions of the cave for those who may have read in stories of Islam or in hadith, you may have come across it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I'm just giving a gist of the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned of these three young boys. They, they ran away because of the tongue. The people were oppressive towards them and they had believed in Iman and they had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they ran away from their people and they went and seek refuge in a cave because of rain. A while in the cave, a rock came and blocked the entrance of the cave. And what did these three young men did? They each start making dua. The first one made his dua. They decided that we all make dua of something sincere that we did in our life. And the other two will say amen to the dua. And like this, the first one made his dua. The second one made his dua. And the third one made his dua. One after the other. And like that, the rock keep moving. So the statement that goes that, you know, dua moves rock, it moves mountain. It is here from an instant Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi told us. That with dua, Anything is possible. With dua, we ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We show our humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any and everything is possible. So we pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us understanding of this dua that we have, this weapon that we have. Let us not take it for granted. Let us not take it to be something minute. But it is one of the most important weapons, it is one of the most important silah that we have as Muslim at our disposal. That we have as believers to show our humbleness and our weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can all be those who are constant in our dua. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such that whenever we supplicate, we only supplicate showing our humility and our humbleness. And showing our weakness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show that we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that whenever we supplicate, we do not forget, as Brother Ayah mentioned, we do not forget those people who are sick. We do not forget our past predecessors. We do not forget our parents. We do not forget our asadiza. So that whenever we make dua, we make dua for all of them. Because where we are today is due to the effort that they have created. It's due to each and every one effort that has bring us, you and I, here today. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them all, all those who have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them bliss in their grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them success on the day of on the day of Yawm al Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all the sick. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them shifa and kamila wa ajila, hastily recovery. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them such cure as, as which there will be no traces of their sickness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us who is here, sitting here, grant us all understanding of deen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from any calamity that is to befall us aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin alhamdulillah إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدله فلا هادي له ونشر والله إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشر أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته ومن يتق الله ورسوله فأولئك هم الفائزون وأحذركم عن عصيان الله ومعصية رسوله ومن يعصي الله ورسوله 
فَأُولَئِكَهُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالْجَمَاعَةِ فَإِنَّ يَدَ اللَّهِ مَا الْجَمَاعَةِ فَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيهِ وَاعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا أما بعد فيا أيها المؤمنون قد أمرنا الله تعالى في محكم التنزيل مخبرا وآمنا إلينا يا أيها المسلمون فقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله بها أشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث آخر أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمن الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله اللهم اغفل العباس وولده مكفرة ظاهرة وباتنة لا تغادر ذنبا ردوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وان كل صحابة الباقين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداك عداء الدين اللهم انصر المسلمين المستدعفين في كل مكان وفي سوريا وفي فلسطين وفي أفغانستان يا رحم الراحمين اللهم أخرج اليهود والنصارى من قلوب المسلمين وأخرج الأقصى من يد الكافرين آمين يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله فاعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بالثلاث وينهاكم عن الثلاث فقال تعالى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغ يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمني ويرحمكم الله Thank <laughs> you.